Hi, my name's Willow. Welcome to the sort of transmission for today. I'm talking to Christchurch Alfred Slimovich. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, man. How you going? Pretty good. Introductions. This should be relatively short. There's only two of you. So off you go. All right. Well, my name's Slim. Uh, and um, somewhere out in the ether is my drummer who's skived off for work to the States, Morgan. Um, and some of you might know, know both of us from uh, back in the day in Tainted. I guess the first question is, what is Grimhop? Um, because I'm a little bit of an ignorant guy musically sometimes, and like new genres appear here, there, and everywhere, and I, I can't keep up. Um, I assumed that maybe it was something that was happening in the background that I was unaware of. So I jumped on Google, expecting there to be pages of information, uh, and there was nothing at all apart from you, basically. So I, I'm now as ignorant as when I started. Uh, which is no surprise. So I suspect that you coined it yourself. Is that right? Yeah, bro. Absolutely not a not a not a lie there. Um, we I I started making this music. Um, you know, obviously I come from metal. Um, and for those of you that have heard it, it's got a, quite a, a, a hip hop spin to it. But it, it it never really fit in with the hip hop guys that I've been talking to. And it sure as hell isn't straight up metal. And I was like, shit, what am I going to do with myself? Like, I can't just slot in with the hip-hop guys. I can't just slot in with the metal guys, even punk and um, drum and bass guys, guys and girls. Um, so I just thought, fuck it, let's just, let's just coin a term and run with it. You know, if, if nothing else, it might make a stand out when we're trying to push something that sounds a bit different and at least give something for people to latch on to. So Ototahi, Grimhop, that's us all day, every day. Uh, so what sort of prompted this uh, change in musical direction from sort of fronting a metal band like Tainted into this? Was it something you've been thinking about doing uh, for a long time in the background or did it just kind of appear out of nowhere? It's not out of nowhere. I mean, as Tainted wound down for various reasons, when we ca when I came out of it, it's like, first of all, I was going overseas. I had to go do my OE. But um, I I really had a bit of a soul search. We were all exhausted. It's like, ah, oh, I don't want to not do music. Um, but I kind of feel like I've done metal just to jump into another metal band would be for lack of a better term, flogging a dead horse. And when I looked at what I was listening to for years, I hadn't been dedicated, you know, listening dedicatedly to, to, um, metal. I just hadn't, um, just is what it is. Um, we were writing it, playing it, living it, breathing it. I just wasn't listening to it. So I looked at what I was, I was listening to and it was, um, now, to much to my surprise, it was it was hip hop, it was drum bass, and it was um, a lot of that dark synthy um, synth wave stuff. Maybe not straight up synth wave guys. People uh, people like um, oh Fantagram and Palika and um, Banks. You know, like straight like pretty much straight up pop, but they all had this real dark edge to it. I think a real watershed was when um, I first heard, heard Death Grips. Um, I first heard them, I was like, this is dog shit. And then I listened to it again, I was like, oh, I guess it's okay. And then there was just this one song, No Love, and it got stuck on my head. And I was like, that's fucking dope. What's so dope about it? And I just imagined how they would play it live. I just imagined, like, if I was doing this shit, how would I do it? It'd be just like I would have with Tainted. I would just thrashed it out as hard as I could and fucking throwing sweat and, and hair everywhere. And I watched one of the videos, I'm like, Oh my god! I need to do something that's not metal but has the same energy. Long-winded explanation, but that's where it sort of came from. I was listening to all these different this music that wasn't metal but had this this heavy energy that I wanted to bring to stage in a different way. Okay. Um, you know, when people ask me what is Slimovich about, it's exploring different ways of expressing heavy music. You know, uh, heavy music can be a whisper. You know, it can be a whispered threat. Or it can be screaming, you know, 100% fucking static and noise, what we're used to. But it's getting into those different areas of, of expressing heavy music as opposed to just straight up metal. I kind of heard the sort of like the same kind of anger that I hear in some metal. But it was a little bit jarring because like the, the background sort of theme music to the anger was unusual. And it, it made me a little uncomfortable, <laughs> to be honest. 
<laughs> that's totally cool bro i don't expect everyone everyone to get this shit you know um uh i don't pretend like we're a super original sound but it's an idea to throw out there um to you know a lot of a lot of band, a lot of different metal guys um especially nick Sherm from um blindfolded they'll express quite openly how broad their range of music is from pop through to you know their tech death and you know this is just a different way of doing it uh, sonically um, I don't think that metal necessarily oh, metal. I don't. I honestly don't think heavy music has to be guitars and drums and bass and beards and bourbon and coke. Um, I definitely think that you can draw that out of of different genres, out of different beats, out of different sounds. And I think um, you know, having done ten years of just straight up metal, it's kind of my responsibility to have a crack at some different sounds that that push in that heavy direction without just being straight up just just flog you know flogging dead horse just going yeah chugs and blast beats again so let's talk about the upcoming tour i guess it's uh before we run out of time we should get to that uh give me the dates places times supports pricing we are heading Porty Porty dunedin on friday the 2nd of june at the crown hotel crown hotel we are playing with person will not this will, different will. I mean, you can come down. I mean, it's up to you. We got Ghost Coloured Faces and we got Blues Boys Saurian. On Friday, the 16th of June, we go to Hamilton. It'll be my first time in Hamilton. Kitty Kitty Draw in like a decade almost, maybe. Mm. We're playing at last place. We got Thief of Baghdad out of Hamilton. We've got Swizzle Jaeger out of Auckland coming down. And we've got the bad bitches from the Venom Dolls coming up, helping us out at that show. Tamaki Makoto is up the next night. Auckland, Saturday, June the 17th. We're at Dead Witch. We got Swizzle Jaeger. We got Venom Dolls. And we got Take Hold. The hardcore boys Take Hold coming to make some noise. So a real mix that night. Uh, a couple of weeks later, Saturday, July 1st, we're in Te Whanganui Atara, Wellington. We're going to be at Moon in Newtown. We are bringing Crying Club. We are bringing Happy Valley. And we're bringing the funky boogie-woogie maestros, the Bravo Uniform Mics. And then to round the tour off, we've got a few weeks off. Unless unless someone in Queenstown down there can put us up for a show, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, I'm talking to, I'm talking to Yonder and I'm talking to Zephyr. Call us. We want to play in Queenstown. Come on, guys. Last show to round off the tour, we're in Otitahi Christchurch. We're coming home. We're playing Dark Room. It's going to be dark. Hopefully, it's going to be sweaty. There might be some blood. I don't know. So far, we've got Bandemic. And very, very excited. Very, very excited to have Ethereon, which is um, Andrew Wilkinson. That's X Habit. That's X, X Lebowski. He's got a new project, and he's coming on and to make that, make that show up for us on that night. Tickets are 10 bucks from Cosmic. Thank you, Cosmic Ticketing, for helping us out. The Auckland show is an exception. That's tickets 10 bucks from Ding Dong Lounge, nz.com. Um, if you don't want tickets, you can give us a full 15 bucks on the door on the night. All right, cool. That's everything. Well done. That was well well done. Cool. So uh, you've released um, Desert Shimmer and Hysteria is single so far, and there's another called Grind uh, set to drop. Is there a larger body of work to be released? And if so, when will that be approximately? Um, as soon as I started booking shows and, and trying to get shows, all that time I thought that I had for recording and putting an album together um, disappeared, <laughs> gone. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll push it out three months and three months turned into six months because I thought I'd have, you know, an album out end of this year. So um, I don't actually know. But there is definitely going to be an album that is happening. Um, I'm an album dude. I love listening to albums. I hate having the argument we've had probably a million times going, the album is dead. The album's fucking not dead. It just needs to be presented in a different way. Um, you know, you can't just release three singles, bring an album, album and call it a day. You gotta sort of think of, of more innovative ways of of you know, a mate of mine goes, you release an album, everyone's kind of excited about it for a week, and then it's gone. You've just put in, you know, two years of yeah. effort or whatever, and it'll disappear. So you just got to think of a different way of 
giving each piece of the album its its space to be considered. But it still goes out in the end as that full package as an album. I love albums. Oh, I love albums. Start, you know, they have albums have different shape and shit like that. And that's what I want to do. I want to make albums. I don't want to make. I'm releasing singles, yeah, but I don't want to just release singles. I want to work towards bookended body of work that has, you know, you can go, well, that's what things were like in this period of time. Oh, when's it coming out? Maybe next year, hopefully. Yeah. All right. So uh, there, there was one more question I was going to ask you because um, you quite often play with uh, bands like you open for Pull Down the Sun, uh, Downfall of Humanity, bands like that. And uh, do, um, do, do do sort of heavy metal audiences kind of get what you're doing because it's it's a little bit dissimilar than what they're sort of expecting perhaps yeah our stuff sounds like sounds hip hop it sounds electronic but we bring a motherfucking rock show and we play just as hard as we possibly can and those metal crowds that are there for blast beats and they're there for fucking chugs and that shit they get it man and they get into it um don't believe me come check us out on tour uh we'll fucking blow your mind <laughs> but I never intended to make this a, uh, oh, I'm going to play with metal bands, but that's the background. Those are the guys that I know from the music scene. It's been a really hard sell with people outside of metal. They don't know who I am and they don't, you know, they don't, they listen to it and they go, yeah, it's kind of hip hop, but they're not like, fuck yeah, let's, let's put on a, a club show or anything like that. So Hitting up the metal crew and and the people that I know from back in the day has been a huge huge lifeline for us to be able to to cut our teeth and I thank all those bands for, for putting us on and it gave us the idea of going well shit I don't think there's any reason why on this tour we can't get some hip hop acts get some punk acts and get some metal acts all together and see if we can vibe off each other's energy and push each other to a a, a better live level you know. Sure, a bit of cross pollination. Yeah, I mean, some sometimes those shows that have quite quite a mixed um, uh, like list of bands, um, they can be quite they can be quite good because often if you go to like a full on heavy metal show and there's six metal bands back to back, you can kind of get like wiped out by the third third or fourth band. You just you can you just kind of lose all all sense of heaviness. Everything just becomes a blur, you know. So if you have a you have sort of a hip hop band or like a punk band just to break it up a little bit. It kind of um, resets your palate, if you like. I think the other thing is that I've I've done, you know, my decade in metal. I've done that. I've played metal show with metal bands. People are still doing that, and that's that's dope. The scene's real healthy at the moment. Holy shit! And when overseas came back, I'm like, oh, things are really happening. You know, people getting signed. Whoa! Um, but I think my job now. I've I've done that. My job now is to push in different directions at those fringes and see if I can help um, introduce different ideas, different sounds um, that may help the scene in other ways. You know, metal is going to be metal. It's always going to be around. People are doing that and they're doing that well. My job's now to push at the edges and see if that's going to help feed in new energy or bring in new fans or, um, you know, get different artists willing to share ideas and different energies with each other well i mean everybody's mu musical journey is different and uh so if, if you feel that you sort of want to go in a different direction to sort of satisfy whatever it is in in yourself that makes you want to do music that's totally valid so good on you mm. all right so best of luck with uh with the uh shows and the tour and and all your all your friends that you're going to play with and uh yeah i'll chat to you later say goodbye to everyone Thank you very much will you're welcome Bye, everyone. I'll see you out on the road. Cool. And thanks for watching.